Good morning, all of my fabulous friends. Great to be here with you. It's me, Pastor Adam, here, and uh, it's kind of dawning on me that we only have this week and next week uh, for these videos because, uh, as you guys know, uh, we are going to be starting to meet in person again uh, at church starting next week, uh, which is um, March 14th. Uh, so uh, today's video and the next week's video um, are going to be the last ones I'm planning on doing. Uh, maybe we'll do more after that, but those are the last two I'm planning on doing. Uh, even though we'll overlap next week a little bit, we'll have in-person classes and video. So you might have a busy day if you do both. Um, but it's hard to believe that our time's uh, coming to an end. Uh, we are going through our talk on uh, how to grow as a disciple of Jesus, our discipleship class, and uh, we've been hitting all sorts of topics. Last week we talked about uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper, or the week before that, the Holy Spirit and learning to follow the Holy Spirit. And uh, this week um, I was going to hit three topics with you guys, but uh, when I started working through it, I thought the first topic is just so important uh, that I'm going to spend most of my time on that one, and that is developing Christian friendships, okay? Maybe that's something you heard talked about at church before. So we're going to give you mostly that, uh, and then maybe just a little bit about how, how to live uh, in, a, in a holy way to honor God. So I'll give you like one and a half topics instead of three topics this week, because uh, I just thought the Christian friendships was so important. Um, let me pray, and then we'll jump right in here. Uh, Lord Jesus, um, uh, thanks for all my friends who've been joining me uh, this time. I, I delight in this time, and we delight in you. Help us uh, to grow well together uh, as your disciples. Um, help us to have fun today, too, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Alrighty, guys. Like I say, we're finishing up our discipleship course this week and next. And uh, disciple, as you know, is, is someone who's learning to grow, learning to follow Jesus. is like a student of his. Uh, we witness to others about Jesus, we tell other people about him, and we grow um, with the help of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, so that we become more and more like Jesus as we follow uh, what he tells us to do and as we live for him. So, um, uh, like I said, our topic today um, is choosing good friends. And just like I said, as I went into this, there's just so much here I wanted to think about this. So uh, we'll start out with you guys and your families with a freezy face question. Boy, how many freezy face questions do we have left? Probably not very many here. Uh, so here's your freezy face question to get you guys talking here. And my question is going to be basically this. Uh, what kind of things do you look for when you make a new friend. Okay, let's say that maybe you're gonna move away from Fairbanks and you're gonna go to Texas or somewhere like that. And maybe you go to a new school or a new church and you're wondering who you should make friends with. What kind of things are you gonna look for in that new friend? Okay, that's your first request question, go. Ooh, that's a really good freezy face. I kind of like doing that. Maybe that'd be my new kind of like superhero motion or something like that. Um, well, I'm curious to hear actually what you said. I wish I could just be talking with you and hear, hear what you said. I mean, I'm sure many of you said, well, maybe you look for someone the same kind of age as you. Or if you're a girl, you probably want another friend who's a girl. If you're a boy, you probably want another friend who's a boy. Or maybe you said, well, I want someone who likes the same kind of things that I'm into. Like if you're into Minecraft, maybe you want a friend who's into Minecraft. Or uh, if you're into doing art, or crafts, maybe you want someone who's who's good that way. Uh, you want things, people to share kind of your hobbies, the things that you love, right? Uh, and all those are all kind of important things uh, for friendships, and a lot of my friendships are, are based uh, on similar kinds of things. I have friends who are guys who are into the same kinds of things that I'm into. Uh, age, not so much, because, you know, uh, adults are all over the place. I'm kind of older than some of my friends, but, um, but those are all important things. But I want to actually challenge you guys to think of one other important aspect when you're choosing a friend. And that aspect is basically, uh, is this person that you want to be friends with and grow uh, in friendship with, are they also a disciple of Christ? Are they a growing disciple of Christ? And I'll tell you why that's important is because uh, the people that we choose as our friends, the people that we spend most of our time with outside of our family, they have uh, the power, 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 power. They have the power to shape uh, how we do as disciples of Christ. Uh, if you choose someone who's uh, a strong disciple of Christ, who's learning to follow Jesus, you will probably grow uh, as a Christian. If you choose someone who is very um, 
not a disciple of Christ and who doesn't want anything to do with God, you will probably shrink uh, in your discipleship with Jesus. And that's just the way it is here. Um, uh, and I'll say, uh, you know, you probably can just tell. Uh, I'm, I'm not just when I say you want to choose a disciple of Christ. I'm, I'm not just saying any Christian, just someone who goes to church. Uh, but I'm talking about those people who are really serious about their faith. And you know who these people are, right? Uh, I did. I was not a Christian in high school even. Uh, but I can tell you, I remember one girl. I don't remember her name, but I can see her face in my mind. And I thought, that girl is a Christian, and she is serious about her faith. And you know how I could tell? I could tell because of the way that she lived her life, the way that she treated other people. Uh, she was more respectful than a lot of kids in my high school. Um, she was very humble. She didn't. She wasn't afraid to to talk to people if they were popular or not popular or anything like that. And that made an impact on me that I could tell that this girl's faith was real. And that was before I was even a Christian. So you know the kind of person I'm talking about here. No, not just oh, well, this person goes to church, you know, a, a little bit. They must be a disciple of Christ. No, someone who really is trying to follow and grow after Christ. And we're not perfect, we're not there yet, uh, but you know who's hungry for God and you know who's not so interested in God. Choose the ones that are hungry for God. Uh, now let me give you um, some verses about this. Uh, I'll read just one or two of them and then I'll, I'll show you one here. Uh, one comes from um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it's verse 33. And this is uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to a very troubled, divided church, right? And kind of near the end of his letter, uh, he says to the people, he says, uh, don't let anyone fool you. Bad companions make a good person bad, right? That sounds like a movie poster almost. Bad companions. A companion is a friend. So bad friends make a good person bad. Uh, have you ever seen this uh, in your own life or in someone else's life where uh, someone you knew and you liked, uh, they were going on a really good course, but then they started hanging out with a, someone who wasn't so good and they had a really bad influence on their life? That's what Paul is saying, basically. He says, some of you people in this church in Corinth, he says, you've been hanging out people with people who have wrong beliefs about God and they have wrong practices. And he basically, right after that, you can read in 1 Corinthians 15, he basically says, stop it. Stop hanging out with these people and stop sinning because uh, they're dragging you down. They're, they're not helping you in your growth and your discipleship with Christ. And I want you to grow. Uh, okay, here's another one. Um, this is from Proverbs, and this will be kind of our verse for today. You know, I like to give you at least one verse here. Uh, and this is uh, Proverbs 13, 20. And it says, whoever spends time with the wise will become wise. Well, whoever makes friends with fools will suffer. Okay? So it's a contrast here, right? He's saying basically, who are you going to make friends with? People who are wise or people who are fools? Uh, now, you might not know this, but in, in uh, the book of Proverbs, typically when they talk about people who are wise and people who are foolish, it really talks about if they do things God's way, if they're wise, or if they reject God's way, they're fools, okay? So it's not just like if they're smart or if they're stupid. Uh, what it's talking about are these people who want to do things God's way, the wise people, or the people who say, I don't care about God, I don't care if he exists, I'm just gonna do things my own way. That's the fool, right? So it's basically saying if you spend time with people who honor God and who are wise, uh, you will become wise. Wow, it's like you just kind of grow, right? Uh, but whoever makes friends with fools will suffer. Uh, basically, you're going to get into trouble uh, if you choose these type of people, of, of friends. And, and basically here, what I'm encouraging you guys to do in your own growth, in your own discipleship, uh, as you follow Jesus, two parts here. One, it's kind of limiting your time. Uh, with those people who are against God and bad influences and increasing your time with people who love God and are good influences, right? Uh, pretty simple stuff here. I think about like even your friends now, and I, you don't have to say it out loud, but think of like maybe your best friend or two or three, who falls in what category? Are they someone who it's very obvious they want to grow in God and they're hungry to grow in him and know him? Or are they people who don't want to have anything to do with God? Where would you put these friends? Well, if they're in the kind of the bad category, uh, I'd encourage you to spend less time with them and spend more time with those friends who are serious about growing in God. I mean, I know, you know, you guys are still young. I'm, am I young? I'm 30, 48. I'm 48, so I'm still young, maybe. But, um, so it's a little bit, um, it gets easier as you, as you get older uh, to do this, I think. Uh, but you can start now uh, choosing some good friends here. Um, 
Now, uh, I want to tell you about two of my friends uh, from when I was a younger man. And uh, one of them was the not-so-good kind of friend. And one of them was the good kind of friend, okay? Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you names, but you won't be able to find them because you don't know where they live in the world or anything like that. Uh, one of them, my, uh, my bad friends, so to speak, was his name was Clay. And uh, in all fairness to me, I wasn't even a Christian at the time. I was, uh, I was a few years before I became a Christian. I was in high school. And um, uh, Clay uh, was not the kind of friend that my, my mom and dad wanted me to hang out with or my, bro my brother hung out with him too because uh, we would get into trouble. We'd do bad things. Uh, he was very disrespectful of God. Uh, he'd make fun of Jesus all the time. And uh, just constant jokes about God. And he made fun of religion, basically. He made fun of anything that said that there's a real God and he, he has a, a claim on our life and he's the boss, basically. And I think about those years and, um, you know, I had fun with my friend Clay. Uh, but um, those were really wasted years that uh, kept me from God longer uh, than uh, probably I was, I was trying to ask questions and, and seek God. And he was someone who was discouraging me from doing that. So in contrast to Clay, bad friend, um, I had a good friend named Dan. This was a few years later. I was a Christian, and um, I was in my 20s. He was a little bit younger than me, but we hung out as friends. We were neighbors, basically, and uh, we did things like we uh, we ate meals together. We watched movies. We played video games. Yeah, ancient video games, uh, not like your fancy 21st century video games, but we played video games together, uh, you know, hanging out in the city, do sports, whatever. Uh, but one thing that was different um, in my friendship with Dan is he was a growing Christian. I was a growing Christian. And sometimes when we'd be, you know, hanging out in town or doing sports or doing video games, he or I would ask a question. Well, hey, uh, I, I read this in the Bible. Uh, what do you think about that? And we'd have a, we'd have these great, deep, deep, really deep, like meaningful life discussions about uh, what God's word said and what the purpose of life was and, and these kinds of things. And we ended up sharpening one another, okay? Kind of like, uh, don't really sharpen fists, but there's there's a proverb, I can't remember where it is, that says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So if you have a good friend, it's like you sharpening your knife blades, that you sharpen him and he sharpens you or she sharpens you and, and vice versa, you know, you're, with your friends, is if you spend some time with people who are growing disciples of Christ, you're going to be sharpening one another. Uh, as opposed to, I guess, if you're spending time with someone who's not a Christian, it's maybe like hitting your knife against a rock and getting it dull and bent and broken, that kind of thing here, okay? So you want to choose the, um, the the good friends, spend more time with them, and spend less time with the friends who are drawing you away. Now, I got a tough question for you, so it's going to be another freezy face here, right? Some of one of you smarty pants people there, because I know you guys are smarty pants, are going to say, oh, yes, but Pastor Adam... Jesus is a friend of sinners. Remember how Jesus hung out with like tax collectors and prostitutes and fishermen and Gentiles and all sorts of weirdos? If we're supposed to be like Jesus, maybe we need to spend time with all these bad, sinful people just like that. Okay. Well, let's say that, was, that you're not the one saying that. Let's say that you're someone else is saying that to you. Well, we should spend more time with uh, bad people, with sinners, with people who don't like God. Uh, because that's what Jesus did. What's your response to that? Okay, I just want to, that's, well, that's the question. What's your response to that? So I'll give you a freezing face. Go. Okay, that's, that's not a very good freezing face. Okay. Well, um, I don't know what your discussion was there, um, but uh, I'd say let's, let's look at one of the passages where basically people confronted Jesus and said pretty much the same thing to him. They were kind of getting upset that he was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Okay. This is, um, uh, a Bible passage from Luke chapter 5. You can look it up now if you want to. Luke chapter 5, verses 29 through 32. And I'll just read it. It says, Then Levi, I know we have a Levi at our church. Hey, Levi, if you're watching. Uh, Levi, Levi gave a big dinner for Jesus. Now, Levi was a tax collector. And back in those days, tax collectors were considered pretty big sinners, bad people, because they took money from the Jews and gave it to the Romans, right? So Jesus is eating dinner with a bad person, Levi, right? Or a, uh, a tax collector. The dinner was at Levi's house. At the table, there were many tax collectors and other people too. But the Pharisees and the men who taught the law for the Pharisees began to complain to the followers of Jesus. They said, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? So they're saying, why are you hanging out with all these bad friends, basically, right? 
Jesus answered them. You probably heard this one before. Healthy people don't need a doctor. It's the sick who need a doctor. I have not come to invite good people. I have come to invite sinners to change their hearts and lives. Or, you know, in some other translations, it says to repent, basically. To, to turn around and say, God, you're the boss and I'm not the boss. And I would say this. If your goal in hanging out uh, with one of your friends who's not a very good influence, like the guy named Clay... If your goal in hanging out with your friend is to draw them to Christ and to cause them to change their hearts and minds about God, that's good. I think that's a good thing, and we can uh, find a place in Scripture for that, certainly. But um, I think the temptation is, is when we hang out with these friends who don't care about God, is we don't really talk about God. We don't ask them questions about God. We're not really trying to get them to change their hearts and minds, but we're just having fun. And doing whatever they want to do. So I think that the, the friendship with these folks who don't want to have anything to do with God, it really depends on where are you going with them? Are you spending time with them specifically so you can talk with them about God and draw them to the truth? Well, then there's a place for that. Go ahead, do that. But if you're just spending time with them, it could be because, well, I like them and we get to do lots of fun, secret stuff that's not really anything to do with God. Uh, that's probably not the best friendship. So again, uh, I hope you get what I'm saying here. Uh, What's your intent in meeting with your friend? If it's if it's to draw them to Jesus, great. That is a great thing. Jesus certainly did that. But you don't see Jesus just going out hanging out with them and doing whatever they wanted to do and not talking about God. He certainly talked about God and tried to change their hearts and minds to, to walk with him. Okay. Um, uh, so, oh, okay. So let's say, let's say you've done this. You've gotten rid of some of your uh, bad friends or spend less time with them. And you spend more time with your good friends. What do you do with them? Uh, as you're both disciples for Jesus. Uh, pretty simple. Anything you do with a normal friend. You spend time with them. You do your hobbies. You play video games or whatever. But I want to encourage you guys too, even in your Christian friendships where you have other people who know Jesus, I want you to take it up a notch, right? Okay, bring your friendship up a little bit and think about starting to talk about God once in a while. It doesn't have to be all the time or every time you meet even. But just start asking them and say, hey, uh, are you reading anything in the Bible lately? Or, um, or you can say if you've been reading something in your in your Bible or you heard something at church, you can say, hey, uh, you know, I was reading and it said Jesus said this. You know, and you can say so whatever he said. What do you think about that? And just start asking questions, you know. And uh, asking questions is a great way just to, to kind of bring God into the equation, right? Um, and um, that's like with my friend Dan and I. Um, it's not like we went uh, to hang out every time with the sole purpose of asking big questions about life and God and that kind of thing. But just as we spent time naturally together, we, we hung out, we ate meals, we, we played video games also. I, I mention video games a lot, don't I? You can tell I like video games. But as we did that, we would ask each other questions uh, about God and what we're thinking and about our experiences and what we're reading and, and that kind of thing. And you can do that too. It might feel a little weird at first, but again, if this is someone who's growing in God, it shouldn't be weird. It should be uh, wonderful and natural. I talk with my kids and my wife like every day about things we read in scripture and, and that's how we sharpen our knives, right? They sharpen me, I sharpen them and, and you'd be surprised. Sometimes even things that my kids say or my wife say will, uh, will uh, make me go, hmm, I never thought of that that way and I can grow as well. Um, uh, one thing my daughter Kate does, uh, she's a little bit older. She's, um, uh, 12 as of the making of this video. And she actually has, uh, something she did this past year or two with some friends called, uh, faith girls club. They made a club and there's a bunch of girls from a homeschool group that they had and they got together. Oh, I don't know, maybe once or twice a month for, you know, six months or something like that. And they'd, um, they read some of the Bible when they're apart. They get together, they talk about it, and then they do crazy fun things like slumber parties or hanging out or talking. Uh, they did a service project. They 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 baked cookies for um, the food bank. I think it was the food bank or uh, one of the food trucks in town here. Um, so they did service projects together. So it, it's a little bit of both. It's just hanging out and having fun with friends, but uh, they also talk about God too. And you can do that too, and it will help you grow. Um, so that's, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about. Our time's running away. Uh, I will end with this. I said, I'd talk a little bit about something else. So that's your topic. And here's the half. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how friendships, uh, shape how we live to honor God. I'm going to read Psalm number one, just the first three verses here. Okay. It's a picture of a tree, right? Well, kind of a person who's a tree. You'll see what I mean. Uh, Psalm one, verse one, it says, happy is the person 
who doesn't listen to the wicked. He doesn't go where sinners go. He doesn't do what bad people do. He loves the Lord's teachings. He thinks about those teachings day and night. He's like a strong, he's strong like a tree planted by a river. It produces fruit in season. Its leaves don't die. Everything he does will succeed. Um, I, I include this at the end because it talks a little bit about friendship. It's basically saying, it's, it's giving us a picture of this person who's saying uh, they don't listen to what uh, the wicked people say, what their bad friends say. He doesn't go where they go. He doesn't do what they do. But it's just not about not doing things. The thing that this person in this psalm does do is they think about God's teachings, the Lord's teachings day and night. It's like the Bible, what's written in God's word. They have this love for what God has said in his word because that shows us who God is. And as they think on it and live their life uh, in light of what they read in the Bible, it says they're like a strong tree planted by the river that produces fruit. And that's kind of, that's like a poetic picture, right? It's not saying they're literally a tree, right? But what it's saying is, is that when we put the right things in front of us, God's word, God's character, these kinds of things, and learn to love and think on those all the time, and we do that in our friendships too, that God is going to produce good fruit in our lives. It's going to uh, impact us. It's going to pick other, impact other people, and so we're going to bring glory to God. Uh, so uh, a little bit of uh, living to honor God thrown in there too, because it is connected. It's, it's not just avoiding bad friends or getting the right friends, but we need to put this beautiful thing in front of us, which is God's word, which is God, really. It's, it's his character. It shows us who he is, what's important to him, so that um, as we fixate on that, on who he is in his word, uh, and live that out, uh, God can produce good fruit in our lives. So uh, I'm just going to end it right there. Boy, we could talk a lot more. So uh, think about your friendships. Who do you need to spend less time with? Who uh, would you like to spend more time with because you want to grow in God like them? Think about that and actually put that into practice, right? And uh, come back next week, even if you're at the in-person classes uh, or if you're not and watching from home, either way, we got one last week in our series. Uh, I'll try to do a good freezy face, hopefully. And we'll talk about sharing the gospel with others, telling other people about Jesus. How do you do that exactly? Um, so that'll be our topic. And they're our last one that I know of for now. So thanks so much. See you guys next week. Bye.